guys, one clue here. I hope all of you are doing well about and having a really great day. In today's video, I want to show you how you can actually get the version 2 of the BitX Miner software onto the device. If you don't know what the BitX Miner is, it's basically a Bitcoin open source solo miner that you can use for trying to find a Bitcoin block. If you still want to know more about this, just check out my recent videos I published about it and you will probably be know a little bit more about it. Today, we just want to focus on how you can actually get the latest version on this device. In one of my last videos, I talked to you and told you that there is some sort of an OTA capability of this device so that you can actually use the web UI. I will quickly switch over to this and update the firmware with the web UI. For the current version or for the next version, AKA the version number two, we cannot do this. There are a ton of changes to this. So we need to go a old fashioned way and we need to connect a couple of cables to this device. For this sake, I will quickly show you a video on how I did this. Uh, basically, I soldered a couple of cables to this, but it's not really a big of a deal. The only thing that you need is a UR to USB bridge that's some sort of device. You will find a link on AliExpress or on Amazon in the video description down below if you want to get such a device. You could also stay with the old version. That's absolutely fine. But recent changes or further changes will be done for the V2. And from the V2, we will stick to the OTA capability so that you don't need to use the cable anymore. Hopefully, I'm not sure if the developers that are publishing things to the, the BitX software uh, ever need to do some cable changes as well, AKA making you in the need of using a cable to update this device. It could be, but this piece of software is open source. It's kind of an innovator, so it shouldn't matter. And you guys should easily follow my steps to accomplish the same thing that we would do today. So let's dive into this. What we see here is we are on the GitHub page got the ESP miner software. And in here we will find that there has been updated the latest release version two, AKA the ultra. Um, Cause there are two different versions of the BitX miner. There is a version with the old S17 end miner chip. It's called the BitX normal, I don't know. And the BitX ultra. The ultra uses a modern ASIC chip, the BM1366. This is the ASIC chip that is currently in the S19 minor. So it's slightly newer and it is a little bit more efficient compared to the old one. So let's click on the latest release. And in here we will find a factory setup guide. To understand everything, I will quickly go over. We will find a file that's called config.cvs.example in our VS Code program. What I recommend here is just go into your VS Code and pull the latest GitHub changes. Then you should see everything that you need in here. We will find this config.cvs.example file. I will quickly open VS Code up here. As you can see, we will find this file in here. And what we need to do is, is to create a config.cvs file. So simply just right click in here and uh, do a new file. Oh no, I'm sorry, go a little bit up. Let's go up and in here. We should be able to create a new file here. Yeah, config.cvs, currently called conf.cvs. It shouldn't really matter, but I need to move this somewhere else. One second, create it in the wrong directory. I'm sorry. You could also just simply uh, open up your Explorer, go to the directory of your GitHub repository and just create a config.cvs file in here. What you need to do is quick uh, in the example file, just copy everything and paste it into the config.cvs. Then we do have a couple of things that we need to modify. They state that we need to modify the ASIC frequency, the ASIC voltage, the ASIC model, and the device model, as well as the board version. To get an idea of what you need to change, they do have a couple of presets or recommended values for the BitX1366, aka the Ultra, or the BitX1397, the original one. So let's see, I do have the BitX1397 one. 
I ordered this from Developer Algo. I will put in the link, a link to his online shop in the video description down below so that you can get your own BitX miner if you're interested. And we will take a look on what we need to change. We'll move this over a little bit. One second, let me make this smaller. In here, what we need to do is first, we need to change this to 1397. Now the device model is also not called Ultra, it's called Max. String should be board version, let me see, should be called 2.2. So now to the frequency, we change, oh yeah, the frequency we can change first. I do love the frequency number of 400. My minor or my ASIC runs smooth with this, with this, with higher frequencies for whatever reason, it pulls a ton more of voltage compared to with 400. The voltage also needs to be adjusted to 1400 and then you can save this file. The next thing that you need to do is you need to open a terminal and in here you will put in pip install dash dash upgrade bitx tool. This should download and install the latest pip version for the bitx tool and then we can actually use the bitx tool to configure our miner. But one thing that I need to mention here, if you just pulled every changes from GitHub, there's one thing missing that you need to add to the file uh, system or to your directory. I do have the esp-miner-factory-v2 binary file currently in this, but normally it wouldn't be in there. What you need to do is to go a little bit more down and download the esp-miner-factory-v2 binary file. Download this and put it in your esp miner GitHub repository directory. Then you will find this uh, one second, then you will find this also here in the ESP minor overview or in VS Code. Just then, and only then you can use the next command. There is also a there's also the, the change of the port that you need or that you should use. So currently I do not have the bit X connected to this device, but I will quickly do this and we will see how we can actually change the port so that we can update the firmware on this device on the correct USB port. Give me one second, I will be back. So I connected the VidX to my PC and I found out what I need to do. So uh, on the web page you see after you've installed the VidX tool you need to flash the new firmware to your VidX. So you need the binary file as I told you before. And here's the command on how you can do this. Keep in mind, uh, we need to change the port. So I changed this to COM11. And just to be sure, I also add in that, uh, let me go a little bit back. I just add in that I use the correct port. Uh, it's this, it should be this. Ah oh, no, uh, port and small one. And I use COM10 in my example. So let's see if I do get a serial connection and if I have done everything correct. Um, nope, I missed a couple of things. So give me one second. Okay, there we go. So I connected the bit X finally in the correct order with all those cables. Okay, I don't know what I have done wrong. I just tried it a second time and it seems like now it is working. I'm not sure for a hundred percent, but let's see. We see that the that the writing is currently happening. Let's see until we get it done to a hundred percent. So then probably there was just something bad happening in the background and uh, yeah, led to an issue. So just, I, I didn't change anything. I just did it a second time, the same command. Maybe the connection of the cables wasn't the best because I just saw them as I told you. And I'm not an expert. Let's see what will happen next. Okay, and again, guys, um, I flashed it now a third time. And now it finally worked. I don't know what has happened before. I would suggest if it takes longer than three minutes, just abort the flash, but do not do this while it is flashing, while the percentage number is increasing. You should never abort it while this is doing stuff like this. I was stuck at this line here, wrote 2400, 570, uh, 67 bytes, blah, blah, blah. Um, this line, I don't know, like VS Code was stuck at this line. So I just st was stuck at this line. And my assumption was that it was reading back all the flash it, it did and was trying to verify it, but for whatever reason, it wasn't doing this. So I just aborted it and did it again. 
now it says leaving and hard resetting via RTS pin. So this is perfect. Now I can unplug it and get it back into my network. So let me quickly pause the video and get back to you and show you how everything works. Okay, so now I plugged it into my wall adapter and now we need to check out the wireless of this device via wireless connection, yay. And let's see. So let's go over to settings. Way better now. Uh, yeah, so that you can see what I'm meaning here. <laughs> the XOS logo is, is handsome now, it's handsome. Now we need to change all our settings. Uh, I need to put in my Wi-Fi and stuff like this. Frequency is set, I do save this. And now I click on restart. I will now give this a couple of seconds. Um, so the IP number is correct. We do get a couple of shares that are accepted. Uh, let me increase the size a little bit. And we do see that we have life locks and also the hash rate. From now on, this will be the version two and everything that will be updated should work over the web. I hope so. I hope so. Don't mark my words, but I hope so. And yeah, I'm, I, I think it's amazing. We do have a, now a new version. We have a couple of minor changes in the code and stuff like this. It's always nice to be on the latest version. You don't need to if yours is running and you want to stay on your old version, you can totally do so. But if you want to upgrade, I hope you like this video and you could follow all the steps that I did. I know it was a little bit squishy here and there, but we finally made it. We have the new version. Everything is up and running. I love you guys. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one. Peace out.